the world around us is changing faster than ever before. Ideas once only imagined in science fiction are becoming a reality. Throughout the course of our amazing 23-episode season, we'll speak to some of the greatest minds in robotics and artificial intelligence to discuss the groundbreaking work that's fueling it all. I'm your host, Ryan Marine. Join me and my co-host, Paul Mitchell, the president of the Indie Autonomous Challenge, and see why we call this the inside track. Today, we are excited to welcome Andrea Levy to the show. Andrea is the man behind the Milan Monza Open Air Motor Show. Today, we'll discuss the ways that the traditional auto show is struggling to spark excitement in the auto industry and how something as simple as driving cars faster can change that. Here we are on the floor of CES, joined, of course, by Paul Mitchell from the Indie Autonomous Challenge and a special guest, a man with many titles. He is the president of the Milan Monza Open Air Motor Show. He is also the CEO of the 777 Hypercar Project. Andre Levy, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Super interested in learning a bit more about your background, but first... Just a few days ago, as we're here recording this at CES, there was a really fun announcement, a special announcement between the Indie Autonomous Challenge and the Milan Monza Open Air Motor Show. Tell us about the announcement and, and what the future holds between these two entities. Yeah, thank you, first of all. And uh, yes, we're very excited because with uh, Paul Mitchell, we just announced that in next year, there will be, let's say, the first uh, autonomous challenge race in uh, Italy. And so in this kind of race, it is a road course. There will be this the, for the Formula Indy challenge. So, of course, we are very, very excited because Paul with his team did a great job. Monza is one of the, let's say, also faster Formula One circuit. The average of Formula One did, it's around, uh, uh, let's say, 260 kilometers per hour. So 180 miles per hour. But it's very complete because you got a long, long straight where I guess you can reach almost 200 miles per hour. But then the first corner, you have to reduce the speed up to 30 miles per hour because it's a very, very, I mean, important corner. So I really look forward to see how all the team and all the uh, Formula Indy Challenge will, will manage this. And so they also will have to do a great, great research and probably... Also, the level of technology will be improved a lot. So we are very, very excited for that. It's a big announcement. Very excited for that, of course. And we'll speak more about what the future holds in a moment. But I'd like to, to pull back the curtain a little bit on, on your story and how you got to this point. I think it's safe to say that automotive and motorsport, that's pretty much a, a big part of your life at this stage. But where did it enter into the equation for you? When did you get the bug? I am organizing a motor show in Italy that now has become definitely the most important uh, Italian motor show. And uh, we started seven years ago with, with a new concept of motor show because we immediately realized that indoor motor show was suffering. Of course, for all of us that we love cars, it's, it's amazing to go in a big motor shop. You, you see this big stand. But for the system, for the car manufacturer, it's too much expensive because you concentrate a lot of millions of, of dollars for five, six days. So we, we try to do another, another, uh, another concept, something that is much more simple, something that is more dynamic. So last year, for example, we got 50 different car manufacturers. So from generalistic car to the best supercar and hypercar, so like Ferrari, Lamborghini, McLaren, Pagani, well, all in a Milano Monza motor show. But it's not just a static motor show. The fact that, of course, we use Monza circuit allow us to have hot lap, to have test drive for, for electric car and full hybrid car. There is no ticket. Uh, also because we really want to, let's say, to spread the passion also to new generations. So Milano Monza Motor Show is good because you can see not just uh, men, first of all, but you see couples, you see family, you see kids. And so, of course, uh, we're trying to, again, to, to spread the motor, the, the motor sport or, or the, the, the car passion to, to also young, uh, young generation. That's right. After years of brands attempting to one-up each other at various motor shows, Andrea had the idea to make his event free and open to the public, inviting all kinds of auto manufacturers at a set price, focusing solely on the cars and their capabilities rather than how they look, which is what you might see at more traditional auto shows. You know, 
Andrea, I think the concept of this open air dynamic motor show is is really uh, something special because you know you were saying that the the traditional auto show is suffering and and if you look at the pandemic, it really hurt that market. The the most recent Detroit Auto Show was you know, a fraction of the size that it had been in the past. And I think part of it is that people want to see these vehicles operating. They want to see the technology performing. You know, it's not just about the design of the cars anymore, right? It's electric vehicle, it's hybrid, it's how fast can it go? Is it autonomous? And you can't really get excited about that technology unless you can see it. Um, and we found that within the autonomous challenge, it was, you know, people love seeing our, our race car, you know, sitting on the floor of CES or at the LA auto show. And there's a lot of pictures that get taken, but almost everybody asks us, is this just a prototype? Does it work? Can, yeah, you know, yeah. has, has, and, and, and then when they find out that, no, these are actual race cars, there's 10 of them and they go 170 miles an hour, you know, it, their minds are blown. Right. So I, I, I applaud what you've done, I guess, what was it about the open air concept um, that led you down that path? I mean, did you see that there was something going on where the shows were getting smaller and that were, did you talk to industry and yeah, they gave yeah, you this yeah. feedback yeah, and said, we, okay, Andrea, if you're going to do yes. something, you need to do it this way. Cause yes, it's not, yes. you, you know, you're really the first to do it. So that, that was pretty innovative. Definitely right, Paul, because at the beginning that we have to move back to 2014, I, let's say interview literally, uh, Volkswagen Group and uh, and let's say the older group now Stellantis let's say at the at the Fiat, year at Fiat, the time, Fiat exactly Fiat so I I go to them and say tell me please I'm going to to open up a new concept tell me what you will like uh, not to to find in a motor show so I interviewed these two car manufacturers that actually share the biggest uh, percentage in Italy so Volkswagen and Fiat. And they told me, for example, uh, uh, Cristiano Fiorio talking about the Alfa Romeo, say, you know, one time we spent a lot of money for a stand and so all the bosses were there, great expectation. We think to be the, one of the bigger one. We invest a lot. We arrived there and Audi got three times our stand. <laughs> what I do not like of the actual indoor motor show is that maybe if you go in Germany, Frankfurt motor show, of course, the German wants to show they're very strong. If you go to Paris, you got the French. And so that, so it's just a demonstration of how strong you are. How much money you're willing to spend. But to of course, extent. someone is not happy. You invest money and, and maybe you have a little boot. So we put rules. In Milano Monza Motor Show, the boot, we, we provide the boot. So it's all the same. So it's not a question who, who have the bigger stand, the bigger boot. It's a question of car. As you were saying, Paul, you are you totally right. Car that you have also to test, you see movement. So if there is electric, you see how, how nice could be moved in, in with no sound, with no vibration. Or if you love the sound of the engine, V8, V6, whatever, you have to hear that engine. And you talked about how, uh, you mentioned it earlier, but... Um the push for EVs in Europe is big. The push for yeah. EVs in US is is growing as well. I, I know the European Union has been very aggressive in in pushing EVs. The automakers in Europe are are saying by some year, maybe all of their cars or most of their cars will be EVs. But you know, it's it's still a struggle because you got to you got to win over the market. So we got to find ways to get people you know in these cars, driving them, exposed to them, to win over hearts and minds, and that's exactly what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. There, there is really a big confusion, especially in Europe, for for which will be the technology of the future. I say also politics helps a lot in creating this yeah. confusion because arrive first the car and not the infrastructure, so they they the recharging. So yeah, people and the risk is that then they don't change the car. So we are we got a lot of old car that need to be re, re, re changed. Better if they change because with more attention for the environment. And uh, so in MIMO, of course, we will allow, by the way, all the technology, not just EV car, but still hybrid, uh, full hybrid or milled hybrid or whatever technology in order really to give a message. If you can update your car, there are several technology. So, I mean, we, we don't know which will be the future. Also, yeah, in Europe has been settled 2035 to go to uh, electrifying, but 
many people saying that uh, probably we will have to see again this date and to see what's happening in the future because probably we can, we will not turn 100% for that date will be there could be other problems so probably all the full market is considering again what will be the future Andrea brings up a very important point for the future of the automotive industry all over the world leaders are pushing for electrified vehicles in March of 2023 EU ministers met in Brussels to sign a pledge that 100% of new cars sold will be zero emission vehicles But leaders signing pledges isn't the only important work. Both the IAC and Milan Monza Motor Show are working to gain the much-needed public support for this changing world. In short, they are proving to the world that autonomous and fully electric vehicles can be just as exciting and powerful as traditional cars. What do you expect the reception to autonomous cars driving at Monza to be? Do you anticipate that there will be some that, that don't feel that autonomous cars belong at the temple of speed oh no no that one it's very interesting because uh, we we just uh, the news is one one day ago yesterday and uh, already the coverage in Italy has been huge so all the newspaper are talking about this uh, in the autonomous challenge coming to Italy so there is great expectation and the people is very interested because there is a lot of curiosity uh, because Monza is really considered one of the most also difficult circuit because it's very complete, not just fast, but then also very slow, slow corner. So there is a lot of curiosity on how these technologies is, is, can be able to go that fast. I mean, probably in our mind, there is autonomous driving. You, you think robot taxi or something that is going sure. quite slow for in the city center. So the fact that Paul with, uh, with his, uh, his format also, show to the to the world that this car can be so fast. Andrea, we were having an interesting conversation off air about how some of this AI technology actually can enter the cockpit and assist a human driver. And that's something that you see potentially in some of your hypercar projects that you're working on. Yeah, correct. And uh, yeah, launch it also on another project that is 777 hypercar that is a, a hypercar built in cooperation with Alara. But it's a car that will not follow any any rules. And so all the engineers are very excited. So the fact that we're not following rules, what does it mean? That we can have the more perform- performing aerodynamics. So with uh, more, more bigger, bigger uh, wings, also more powerful engine. We will use a V8 natural aspirator 4.5 liters by Gibson that produce uh, engine for motorsports. Uh, 730 horsepower for just 900 kilos. So it will be definitely the ultimate uh, racing car. And you were saying some of the sensor information that we see in something like the in the autonomous challenge car, there's perhaps ways of incorporating that into the cockpit to give the driver maybe real-time coaching or feedback. Exactly. I, I think that uh, what, what Paul is doing in Formula Indy got several applications in, in, in many kinds of cars. In the 777 per car could help, uh, you know, sometimes this, the owner of this car, maybe it's not professional driver, maybe got, got already a garage with huge supercar per car. So, of course... Uh, this kind of race uh, uh, show us uh, how to, uh, um, let's say, the autonomous intelligence should take the decision in really millisecond. And this is what happened in real life. When, when a car cross you in, in a nothing time, and so, of course, many, many of these technology can help you and probably can save lives. And Paul, that's been your feedback too, right? From yeah. automotive as well as from the racing industry. Yeah, I mean, I think... Um, there is the potential for the perception systems that are in autonomous vehicles uh, and some of the other um, sensor systems to be applied to human-driven race cars or hypercars in a way that gives the driver, you know, 360-degree understanding of what's going on around them. Future drivers to have that full perception. The technology is there. And maybe that's what's needed to unlock those those next levels of speed, you know, because we do know cars could go 300 miles per hour or, or into that realm. Historically, it's been unsafe to do that because of the, the risk to the driver's life. With all the advancement that Delara and others have made around carbon fiber monocoques, we can now protect a driver under really 
serious conditions and, and accidents. Um, but you still have the limits of what can the driver perceive around them. And so adding in these kinds of technologies, I think, could unlock um, higher speeds and, and safer racing for the the gentleman driver or the person who's buying a hypercar who's trying to learn there it could be more of a of a coach right uh, where you're giving them you know okay you're coming into a turn here is the recommended the ai recommended path right, right. you don't have to take it maybe uh, you can go slower you could you could make an adjustment and here's the recommended time for braking here's the rec- so basically an ai coach uh and you know that's going to help uh, people who buy these cars frankly not only become better drivers, but get the full value out of this yeah, expensive, yeah, right. uh, expensive asset. So I'm, I'm excited to see where uh, this, this uh, 777 uh, project goes. I know that Delara and, and uh, Andrea Pondramelli, who we know well, and Andrea Levy, if these guys have cooked up this idea. Uh, certainly, it's going to be very exciting to see. And if there's a role for some of the tech we have in India Autonomous Challenge, we're, we're excited to, uh, uh, to contribute it. Let's close with this. You are a car enthusiast. Automotive is your life. How do you think of the future, our AI future, with autonomous driving creeping in, with electrification coming in increasingly? Is this something that excites you or does it does it uh, concern you? Definitely excites me, but what we're understanding generally, talking to, to car mobility, is that we have to use every technology in the right way. Some Sometimes people are scared because think that maybe you have to use 100%. Not at all. I'm sure that uh, intelligent, artificial intelligence will enter, is already entering in the right balance. That is the, the right key. So, of course, there is a lot of, we already talk, field where this one could save life, could be important. Doesn't mean that we will go autonomously. There will be, for some use, will be a very good technology. In other use, we will driving our car. If you need to drive a lot, of course, a normal car, it's probably the, the better, the better technology. So, that is the fact. But of course, we have to be open, open mind to, to new technology and not taking 100%, but taking the right percentage we need for our daily life. Andrea, fascinating conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you to you, Ryan. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thanks for joining us this week on the Inside Track. That was Andrea Levy teaching us how simply driving the cars at an auto show can generate true excitement in the autonomous vehicle space and the future of race cars. And next week, we'll be sitting down with Gene Renuart to discuss how an autonomous race car is a national security asset for the United States.